Isaac, you're going to see something on your screen. Don't worry about it too much. It's for people watching via uh, Orca Media. All right. So for anyone viewing tonight's development review board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion um, using the Zoom platform using either the video or telephone telephone access options. So for the full video experience, um, you can type this link into your web browser and I'll get a notification that you wanna come into the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number here and plug in this meeting ID. I'm sorry, I forgot to put a space there between the eights. Um, and again, I'll get a notification that you wanna come into the meeting. Um, if anyone is trying to get into the meeting and is having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, if you do call in on the phone, you can use star six to mute or unmute. Um, we don't have that many people on right now it's all members or the applicants so i'm not gonna worry about making sure everybody's muted um please note that in the future if we have a large group and large number of attendees um i will probably just have everybody muted uh, maybe except for the board members and um people have to raise their hands and ask to be unmuted um if they want to talk, please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshootings or logistic questions only. Um, I will now um, turn the meeting back over to the chair. Okay. Um, tonight we have in front of us uh, an application um, from 585 Elm Street. Um, the owner applicant is Isaac Lawrence, and it's a sketch plan review for a two lot subdivision. Um, and if people want to just give us a very brief overview and then we'll let Isaac speak, that would be really helpful. Um, so like you said, it's a two lot subdivision. Um, there's already a um, home with, I remember correctly, because it feels like it's been a really long while since I wrote this, um, uh, more than one uh, dwelling unit on it. I can't remember if it's two or three right now. Uh, sorry, three dwelling units. Um, and there, there's more than enough room on the parcel density wise for more dwelling units. He's proposing to um, roughly split the the parcel down the middle. Um, one of the complications here is that it does abut the north branch of the Winooski River. Um, and so for one of the few times um, in the five years I've been here, the board does have to consider the river hazard area regulations in that um, when that comes up for subdivision, you need to consider the developability of the parcel given that floodplain situation. Um, now, the applicant has gotten what we call a LOMA, a letter of map amendment does is a more detailed review of where that flood hazard line is and that shows on the um, plans um, to show what land is high enough that is out of the special flood hazard area or their flood plain um, and shows where the land is that's more apt more, more easily developed um, and here of course you also have to deal with river corridor it's one of the few stretches of river in montpelier where we have what's called the river corridor which had puts even tighter limitations on what can be done with the land um, but that's again all still within that special flood hazard area um, where the river corridor is so it's it's a consideration but um, as outlined in my staff report i don't think it's something that should hold up the subdivision process because there's still enough developable land um, outside of those those high risk areas for new development um so great that's my overview okay uh, i think maybe you'd like to just give us a little um a brief introduction and sort of what your what your project looks like absolutely um so thank you meredith for yeah covering the basics there so we bought this property um November of 2022. Um, this is extraneous information, but I grew up in Montpelier. We're hoping to move back someday in the near future. Um, and yeah, so we are hoping to subdivide 
as Meredith outlined the parcel, about in half, leaving the three unit, um, what used to be a farmhouse, now it has three apartments, a barn and a garage on um, what we call lot one, uh, and um, create a new lot on lot two. So the, the property really is, um, there's about, oh, I don't know, a third of it that is more or less at the grade of Elm Street, and then um, a bunch of it is down just a few feet above the Winooski River. Um, so the hope is that lot two, the newly created lot, that there'd be plenty of space within the setbacks um, to build um, probably a single family home up there on the high portion of the land. Um, as we've seen since we purchased the property, flooding is a consideration in Montpelier and elsewhere in the state. So that's the place we want to be. Um, we want to be high and dry with any any potential future development there. Um, not, uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, I think, you know, just a pretty basic two lot subdivision. So I would really turn it over to the board for questions, comments, concerns. Okay. Meredith, can you, can you pull up the map of the um, proposed subdivision? Yeah. Do you want to see the plat, which is what is, is specifically just the lines, or do you want to see the site plan that also shows where that um, flood hazard line is? Yes, please. Second the flood hazard. Okay. Thanks. All right, can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so this dotted line that's a little straighter um, is a line that where they've moved things to in the what's called the loma um, so that everything to the right is considered to be part of the special flood hazard area. Um, and then to the left is the, the land that would be considered outside of there. Um, I noted in the, in the staff report that this line may or may not also represent where the river corridor line is. So um, we'll probably wanna see where that river corridor line is as well. Um, well, not we probably, well, we will need to see that, um, but, it's it's very if it's not exactly the same it's very very similar um, based on my review of the GIS mapping. Okay. I, Isaac, uh, what's the plan for um, for access to the to the rear lot there? Um, so it's not um, you, you say rear lot, Rob? Yeah, the front lot with front on the river. Um, so they, to be clear, Elm Street runs, um, they both have frontage on Elm Street. Um, in the one case, lot one has 126 feet, lot two has 133 feet. So um, lot one, where the existing um, house is, would just keep its circular driveway there. Um, lot two, we have a potential driveway location just from Elm Street. Um, so just be a straight shot. We need a single curb cut for lot two. Yeah, the new, in case you, because you're just calling in on the phone, Rob, um, and yep. if you didn't pick up the, 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 the new lot, the new line being created runs from Elm Street straight back to the river. That's a helpful description. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I guess it's, I must have been looking at something, I must have, must have looking at something different a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I know, well, there's, I mean, you can see where it says uh, there's a, a dotted line that says dimensional line established for removal of area from the floodplain. That's that's a, a river hazard area line. It's not a new like parcel line. It might, you might be confusing that one. It's confusing also because the parcels are labeled on the back on the river corridor. Oh, portion. yeah. Yeah. Like, so like, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's just something to tweak, Isaac, when we do this, when you do this for final, is make sure that those lot one, lot two numbers are actually closer to the road. That would be helpful. Yeah, and I think we'll brighten up the lot lines too. Um, color, something like that. 
Right. Yeah. A, a little more distinction between what those are and because there's there's a lot of information. It's not your it's not your fault. There has to be a lot when we've got the floodplain involved. Okay. Um, I guess the, the question I, I had a question about, and it seems like it seems like the proportion or the part of the parcel that is not in the flood zone that is not in the river hazard area um, is not subject. To, is there a steep slope concern there in the front part of that parcel? I don't think so. Um... But we could get some um, mapping done. I mean, that would have to be considered for any future potential subdivision too, right? Or sorry, future potential development. Right. But that would but that would come up with with the next, you know, whenever you uh, whenever you brought that in as the next project. Right. Not, right. Not I, as part of this subdivision. Yeah. I have two questions. Um, one has to do with a staff comment about the Conservation Commission needing to weigh in. Has there any been any intel on that? Um, so I have not heard back from them yet. I know a lot of people have been on vacation and they actually at their just like their meeting that was supposed to occur like the Day, same day as ours, the day before ours, something like that, a couple days before ours that got canceled because of the, the flooding. Um, they uh, decided to move their meetings to a different day of the month. So I have to, I just realized, found that out today. Um, so I have to chase them down because they have not, I have not gotten confirmation from them on an agenda of getting this on their agenda yet. Um, I did send it to the chair and the staff, so I'm chasing on that, um, and we'll get, I'll make sure that those comments are incorporated before you see this for final. The other question I had had to do with, um, landscaping, but particularly with any existing, um, significant landscape features such as mature trees or whatever on lot two. So there are three apple trees um, that are fairly mature that are, um, I guess in probably the easiest way to describe it is they are on the north side of the lot um, a distance from elm street about equal to where the barn is just general vicinity there um, of lot two um and the hope would be so i mean you know if we're going to put a proposed or a, a possible um house site the hope would be and it certainly is possible on the site um, up on the high area to have a house within the setbacks that doesn't touch those trees. I will say one of the trees that was just reported to me has split in half. So I think there's now two trees, sadly. But um, <laughs> but nothing else. No wonderful elms that escaped. There we go. The big Are ones. The, the big ones on lot them? one. It's out in front of the barn. You can see the nice apple one. trees below. So did you say one of these apple trees here in the back split? Yeah, yeah they were pruned very in a very aggressively flat uh, <laughs> way, and it leaves them susceptible in the core. So it had no canopy in the middle at all, um, and they're prone to rot and split that way, unfortunately. And what's the what's the tree on the far right of my screen, farther from the house? That one. Is that that's actually then? that's way back behind the other house there's see the softwoods here that tree is on the other parcel i think because there's a fence got it yeah i'll go a little so, bit further so it, along except for the apple trees it's an open flat space yeah yeah that's right and except and there are these three these are they're on the property too these three whatever they softwoods. are bruce pine whatever yeah yeah, those sort of looked like screening that was put in to screen from the neighbors and everybody sort of built that up there. 
Ya. You know that um, one of the things that we had talked about, we had another subdivision, another two lot subdivision, I think it was on Gallison Hill Road, um, where we talked about requiring uh, any kind of landscaping plan and the feeling of the board at that point was that with a two um, lot subdivision that could really be left up to future owners to decide that, um, that that wasn't something that we necessarily needed to weigh in on. Other questions from people? Brian? Other questions from the applicant? I think so. Meredith has looks um, oh, Isaac, I think maybe your internet might be going on this time. Maybe turn off your video and try that again because you were in and out. Um, no, I don't think I have any questions, Meredith. You helpfully laid out in email what the rest of the process looks like. Um, okay. Yeah. I think as far as sketch plan goes, I don't really have any additional questions. I think pretty straightforward. Uh, need to move on to the next step here from as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I think that's all that we, uh, that we don't have any further questions. And I don't think we need to do anything further there. Um, we look forward to seeing your final application. I think Meredith has given good cues to what the final application needs to account for, and there don't seem to be any large red flags. Erosion control, maybe. Yeah, and that'll be, the erosion control would be more for the next, for the development right. um, phase. So, um, yeah, we'll need to, I'll, I'll make sure to keep Isaac updated on my discussions with the Conservation Commission to make sure he can coordinate with them um, and get their input. Um, and Isaac and I will work together on, on the final tweaks to the rest of the package um, and move forward from there, it sounds like. Uh, thanks very much, Isaac, for coming in. Um, appreciate it. <laughs> I'll send you a copy of the minutes once they're final, Isaac, So, because there isn't any decision from tonight. Um, the record will be the minutes, but you and I can email back and forth about, you know, what anything that you have questions on the staff report. Um, and like I said, about the Conservation Commission. So feel free to email or call if you have any questions before you hear from me. Um, so You are cut, you are definitely cutting out. Um, All right. Laundry. Well, I guess I can sign off. Have a nice <laughs> night, everyone. Okay, thank Good you night. very much. <laughs> I um, have a question. Yeah. It's under other business and it's trivial, but are we going to get to meet in chambers again? I was just about to say something about this. Meredith and I were talking at the beginning there, um, and it sounds like it, I'll, I'll let Meredith explain. But yes, it sounds like we will um, pretty soon, maybe even. Yeah. So my hope is that by at least the second meeting in February, we'll be back in chambers um, and doing the hybrid. Um, the city Council is holding their first uh, hybrid in Council chambers tomorrow. And so they would kind of like to be allowed to do that at least twice before they start throwing additional committees in there. Um, so we want to make sure that they work out any bugs with ORCA and uh, the wiring that's in there. Um, um, and assuming that that all goes well, um, then what we would do is for the, once we get the all clear, it would be for the next warned meeting, right? Because we have to send out public hearing notices so many weeks in advance of the actual hearing well before the agenda um, about the location of the meeting so the earliest it would probably be is the second february meeting um 
just be, because we've already warned the one for January 16th. We already have a, an application for that. Um, and the deadline for the first February meeting is, um, uh, la, 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 what, January 12th. So I think the, the earliest we would meet in chamber should be end of February, but it is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> we won't be stuck with just zoom um, until, okay. until renovations are over. Right. There, there may be, there may be times when we can't, um, you know, cause there's talk about those meeting spaces um, becoming offices, but you would think that before that happened, they'd create the new mating spaces somewhere else first um, to try and have some sort of, some sort of, you know, relatively smooth, at least not like drop off, cliff drop off transition. Um, but it's, you know, we got to all sort of keep our, keep our roller skates on. Um, but yes, that's, that's, I was going to actually, flag that up if nobody asked. That is some good news um, coming our way. We do have an application for the 16th. Um, so feel free to take a look at the pending applications page for that. Um, it is another uh, request to amend um, approval conditions. Um, I think it should be fairly straightforward. Um, it's just adjusting, again, it's adjusting a deadline on one of the conditions of approval of a prior project. Um, and then a reminder that we have Tuesday meetings in January, um, and then we'll actually have another one in February too. So we've got a lot of Tuesday meetings. Why do we have Tuesday meetings? Because the Mondays oh, are holidays. The holidays. MLK, right, right. Yep. So next one, it's MLK. And then in February, the city actually shuts down for President's Day. All right. Hey. I'll take it. My kids don't have that day off. <laughs> I got a phone off, my... everybody. Bye, right. Rob. Bye, Thanks, Rob. Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, I guess that's the meeting adjourned because there's actually no quorum now. Okay. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody.